easily one of my favorite tools in the shop, the router. It's portable, it's versatile, it can carve, it can do edge profiles, it can do joinery. I mean, it can do pretty much anything you throw at it. Let's check it out. All right, so first let's talk about the types of routers. There's a variety of different types that we can work with here. So basically this is a router. A router is a motor that's attached to a spindle that turns a bit. Here you have the collet, which holds the bit in place. You have an on off switch, and then a lot of models will have a speed dial as well, depending on the size of bit that you're using. These two routers are the same router with a different base. So you have what's called a fixed base router, which generally I use for things on the edges of boards, for roundovers and chamfers and flush trimming, things of that nature. And then you've got a plunge router, which allows you to plunge in and out of the wood. The plunge router I'm gonna generally use for carving and things inside the board, so juice grooves, things of that nature. You also have a trim router, which is a smaller, handheld, lighter version of the fixed base. Um, it's just easy to use, and so a lot of times for lighter work, I'll use this. Another common use for a fixed base router would be to flip it upside down and put it in a router table. You can check out my router table video right here. All right, let's talk about bits. One of the cool things about a router is you can put a whole heap of different bits in there and you can make it do different things. So one of the first major differences when we look at a router is going to be the bits. So this bit has a bearing, a bearing bit, this bit does not. Typically speaking, a bearing bit is gonna be used for edge treatments, for things like roundovers, chamfers, etc. And this bearing is gonna act as the fence and the board is gonna ride against that and it's not gonna be able to cut any deeper so that's gonna be your guide or your fence. A non-bearing bit doesn't have a bearing, so it needs an external fence if you wanna keep it straight. Okay, so back to bearing bits. Probably my most commonly used bearing bits are going to be the roundover, which is gonna give a rounded profile, the chamfer, which is gonna give a beveled profile, and the flush trim bit, which is going to allow me to make parts that are exactly the same. So I can run this on a pattern, and I can trim things so that they're exactly the same. Most commonly used for non-bearing bits would be a straight bit. The straight bit I use a lot for dados and rabbits and things of that nature. A V-groove bit, which is going to be used generally for carving and sign making. And a fluted carving bit, which is going to push the chips out of the way. Another difference that we see is in the shank size. Here I have two half inch bits same basic half inch straight bit, but one has a half inch shank and one has a quarter inch shank. And those go into a corresponding collet. So half inch shank goes into a half inch collet, quarter inch shank goes into a quarter inch collet. And really the biggest difference is you're gonna be using the half inch for heavier duty operations. Hey, listen, router bits get really expensive. So as a side note, if you're a beginner, buy a variety pack. Get yourself one of these cheaper, versions of bits that have a ton of different bits in them and see which ones you like the best. Try them out, decide which ones are the ones you use most often, and then go and buy the expensive version of that bit. Okay, so some router safety basics here. As with any power tool, eye protection is gonna be important. This thing can throw chips, so you wanna protect your eyes. Hearing protection is optional, but recommended. These things can make an obnoxious noise as they're rolling through wood. Remember that this bit is going to be spinning in here and you don't want anything getting wrapped up in it and causing it to rip out of your hands or rip something off of you like your hair. So secure your clothing and your hair. Guys, when we make adjustments to the tool, it should be unplugged. Depth of cut. When you're making a cut on a router, so for instance, let's say I was making a groove in wood with this half inch straight bit. I want to cut only half the diameter of the bit in one pass. So if I wanted to make a one inch deep dado on a board and I was using this half inch bit, I would need four passes, a quarter inch each pass. So half the diameter of the bit in each cut. And then you always want to cut against the direction that the blade is spinning. So if the blade is spinning this way, I want to cut in the opposite direction that it's spinning. Okay, let's talk about inserting a bit into the collet. Your bit shank should always go at least halfway into the collet. So half the bit at a minimum should be inserted into the collet. 
I like to leave about a quarter inch of space in between the collet and the bit so that none of this painted portion down here is touching the collet. Okay, to install a bit, depending on your model of router, you're going to need some sort of wrench. It. These Boshes require two wrenches, one for the collet nut and one for the collet itself. So basically what you're gonna do is expose your collet here so that you can reach it. You're gonna take your bit and you're going to insert it into the collet and you're going to hand tighten that until it stays in the position that you need it to be in. From there, you're gonna take your second wrench and you're going to tighten them. Now, do not over tighten, just enough that it snugs it in there. You don't want it coming out, but you don't want it so tight that you can't ever get it out again. Okay, so when we talk about setting the depth of the bit, we have a basic chamfering bit here. We have the cutting edge here and we have a shoulder of the cutting edge here. Now, if this shoulder is included in the cut, it's going to leave a ledge. So if you don't want that ledge, you're going to set this edge just below the surface of the base plate. So to do that on these routers, you're going to unclamp and you're going to push this in and then that's going to allow this to raise up and lower, okay? And when you get it set to about the depth that you want, it's going to click in place. Now this part right here is going to be a micro adjustment. So I can micro adjust and I can get it set exactly how I want it right before I route as I've got it set on there. Always make sure you clamp it back down. Okay, so we wanna make sure that our material is held secure. So if I'm gonna make a groove in this board and I start going ahead and routing this, this board is gonna move around, which is gonna give me an uneven cut. I need to make sure that I secure this material to the table. So, easiest way is to take a couple of clamps and secure it down. That's gonna keep it from moving around as your router. All right, so that's the basics of the router. If this was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our video on router table safety. I'll post the link in the description as well as up here. And a future video on router carving. Until next time, peace.